Permafrost thawing can cause unpredictable climate change. This is what Russian scientists have recently revealed. This is today's Putnik article. The thawing of submarine permafrost leads to massive emissions of greenhouse methane, which can change the climate in the future. Tomsk Polytechnic University, TPU's research in the seas of the Eastern Arctic is aimed at assessing the scale of these processes. This is what the press service of TPU told Sputnik, permafrost thawing and methane anomalies occur. On September 16, TPU scientists aboard the research vessel Academic M. Keldish left from Arkhangelsk for another expedition to the seas of the Eastern Arctic together with the staff of the Pacific Oceanologic Institute, POI, and the Institute of Oceanology. The expedition is aimed at identifying the bio, geochemical and environmental consequences of permafrost thawing in the eastern Arctic seas and along the northern sea route. In recent decades, studies of permafrost thaw under the influence of climate change have been carried out mainly on land. A joint study by TPU and TOIRAS showed that in at least the last 30 years, the rate of permafrost thawing in the seas of the eastern Arctic, that's the North Pole, of course, has doubled. It's doubled in the past 30 years compared to previous centuries and reached 18 centimeters per year. This means that during the modern period of warming, the roof of the submarine permafrost has deepened into the stability zone of the hydrates or hard methane which has led to their destabilization and massive emissions of greenhouse methane gas. TPU scientists led by Professor Natalia Shakova have proven that submarine permafrost is unstable. Gigantic methane reserves, including hydrates, are being demothballed, and the world's largest anomalies of dissolved and atmospheric methane are being formed. The research results were published in the Science Magazine 2010 and in Nature Geoscience and Nature Communications in 2014 and 2017. In the autumn of 2018, researchers discovered an anomaly of dissolved methane with concentrations 10,000 times higher than the background ones. 10,000 times higher why it's necessary now to study process on the Arctic shelf. According to scientists, first of all, studying permafrost thawing processes helps assess geological risks. Quote, if you don't consider the results of the study of the submarine permafrost state, geological and environmental disasters such as accidents in the Gulf of Mexico causing irreparable damage may occur during exploration and industrial activity, unquote. Igor Semiletov, corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, head of Arctic research at TOI, and professor of the TPU Department of Geology, told Sputnik. He noted that new risk zones appeared during the installation of platforms with nuclear reactors. Now we know that recently uh, a nuclear reactor ship, a generator, a nuclear uh, floating nuclear reactor uh, was uh, being sent by Russia to the North Pole, to the Arctic, for uh, supplying energy. Okay, so now new risk zones appeared during the installation of platforms with nuclear reactors on the Arctic shelf in places with a complex structure of submarine permafrost and manifestations of cold vultures, that's sections of the ocean or seafloor where gases are released from an underlying rock, rock formations and hydrothermal activity. Secondly, such studies help assess possible climate effects. For example, 1 to 5 percent of the hydrates of the eastern Arctic sea shelf, where more than 80 percent of all submarine permafrost is located, enter the atmosphere. The densification of atmospheric methane can affect the planet, planet's climate. Thirdly, scientists will be able to predict the environmental effects of permafrost thawing 
According to the results published in Nature Geoscience in 2016, extreme acidification of the water due to the oxidization of permafrost erosive carbon and dissolved methanes fractioning to carbon dioxide is a great danger. This process leads to significant environmental consequences including the dissolution of carbonate containing shells and shells of marine mollusks which leads to the, their extinction. So, to clarify the environmental and possible climactic consequences of the massive release of methane from sediments into the water column and atmosphere, it's necessary to continue comprehensive research into the seas of the Eastern Arctic. This requires the creation of a separate federal or international program, including the development of integrated observations in the Siberian sector of the Arctic with research vessels, drifting platforms, including the drift of the Capitan Dranitsin icebreaker planned for 2019 and 20, aircraft and drones, and quote, this is what Igor Semiletov pointed out. Leading scientists from institutes of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, Moscow State University, NARFU, Universities in Sweden, the Netherlands, Great Britain, and the USA and Italy will take part in all this research. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.